Imagine a world where you were a pilot. No, better yet, imagine a world where you had the skills to be a pilot. Actually, don't imagine anything, because you'll probably get distracted and stop listening to my beautiful voice. There's a lot in life that we can get distracted by, and it's not always a bad thing. However, for a U.S. Air Force pilot, it is. That's not what happened to our guest tonight, I just thought that that sounded like a cool intro. Speaking of my beautiful voice and intro, let me tell you what tonight's show is about. It's about Felix Moncla, a pilot who went mysteriously missing. I'm your host, Joseph Jordan, and thank you for listening to this episode of the Scary, Strange, and Outright Odd Show. Felix Moncla was born in Mansara, Louisiana, on October 21st, 1926, to Felix Sr., who was a high school teacher, principal, and veteran of World War I, and Yvonne Moncla, a seamstress. He also had two older sisters, Leonie and Muriel Ann. Not long after his father had been hospitalized, the family moved to Moraville, Louisiana, to live with his uncle and great aunt. He attended high school in the area, and after graduating, accepted an athletic scholarship to Southwest Louisiana Institute. Now it's the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, where he played football and received his Bachelor of Science degree. After graduation, he enlisted in the U.S. Army and served during World War II and occupied Japan. After his service, he attended the University of New Orleans, but re-enlisted in the military at the start of the Korean War in 1950 with the United States Air Force as an officer pilot trainee. After spending a few months at a desk job in Dallas, Texas, Moncla was sent to Connolly Air Force Base in Waco, Texas, for basic pilot training where he met and married Bobby Jean Coleman. He took his advanced pilot training at Reese Air Force Base in Lubbock, Texas, and further training on the F-89 Scorpion at Tyndall Air Force Base in Panama City, Florida. In Panama City, Bobby Jean gave birth to their first son. In July 1952, Moncla and his family moved to Madison, Wisconsin, and had a daughter born five months before Felix Moncla's disappearance. On the evening of November 22, 1953, Air Defense Command ground intercept radar operators identified an unusual target near the Sioux Locks. An F-89C Scorpion jet from Kinross Air Force Base was scrambled to investigate the radar return. Wilson had problems tracking the object on the Scorpion's radar, so ground near radar operators gave Moncla directions toward the object as he flew. Moncla eventually closed in on the object at about 8,000 feet in altitude. Ground control tracked the scorpion and the identified object split into two blips on the radar screen. The two blips on the radar screen grew closer and closer until they seemed to merge as one. Assuming that Moncla had flown either under or over the target, ground control thought that moments later, the scorpion and the object would again appear as two separate blips. Donald Kehoe Ah! reported that there was a fear that the two objects had struck one another, as if it was a quote-unquote smashing collision. Rather, the single blip continued on its previous course. Attempts were made to contact Moncla via radio, but it was unsuccessful. A search and rescue operation by both the U.S. Air Force and RCAF was quickly mounted, but failed to find a trace of the pilot of the plane or pilots. Weather conditions were a factor hampering the search. The official accident report states that when the unknown was first picked up on the radar, it was believed to be RCAF aircraft VC-912, but it was classified as unknown because it was off the flight plan course by about 30 miles. This assertion was emphatically denied by the pilot of the RCAF flight, Gerald Fosberg, when he was interviewed by the David Cherniak documentary, The Moncla Memories, produced by Vision TV's Enigma series. The USAF also provided an alternative explanation to noted, U to noted UFO investigator David Kehoe. His 1955 book, The Flying Saucer Conspiracies, provides detailed information of his investigation of the F-89's disappearance, which began the night of the incident when he received a phone call telling him of a rumor 
out of Selfridge Field that an F-89 from Kensick was hit by a flying saucer. A follow-up telephone call to Public Information Officer Lieutenant Robert C. White revealed that the unknown in that case was a Canadian DC-3. It was over the locks by mistake. The locks refer to the restricted airspace over the locks of, of Salt, St. Marie, on the U.S.-Canada border at the southeast end of Lake Superior. So, what do you, the listener, think happened to Felix? Was it a UFO? Was it a plane crash? Is the government trying to hide something? I personally don't really know. I can't say that I have too much of a speculation about this, if I'm being totally honest with you. But I will say that I think that it is something that needs to be further investigated. I'm Joseph Jordan. Thank you for listening in to this episode of the Scary, Strange, and Outright Odd Show.